big news, Wacom have redesigned their flagship tablets, the Intuos Pro. So right now I have the Intuos Pro Medium and we're going to have a look at this brand new design and check out the new features. So the previous version of the Intuos Pro came out in 2017. Eight years later, 2025, we have a brand new design with some exciting new specs and functionality. And full disclosure, this is a sponsored video. Wacom did give me this tablet. This whole video is completely mine. I've not been told what to say or anything like that. This is my own thoughts and opinions, and I'm gonna give you the positives as well as the negatives. All right, let's jump in. Let's first of all take a look at this, and then we're gonna jump into Photoshop, and then we're gonna use it for retouching a photograph. So let's open it up right now. And I am yet to see this in person. There we go. Ooh, it's thin. Ooh, look at that. So the first thing you can see is they've reduced the size. Our working area is just as much, if not a little bit more, because now it's a 16.9 format. But what they've done is they've got rid of a lot of the bezels so this can fit in your bag easier, it can fit on your desk easier. If we look at the tablet, we can see in the top here we've got express keys and then we've got mechanical dials. Mechanical dials, you can actually turn them and you can feel the tactile. They just click as you move them, kind of like, kind of like a Swiss watch. Let's compare it with the previous Intuos Pro. This one was also a medium. Look at the difference in size. You can see how much smaller footprint it is. It's much narrower now. And then look at the thickness. And then when we look at the Pro Pen 3, one of the wonderful things about the Wacom pens, there's no charging, there's no battery required. You just use this pen and it's very customizable. So if we open it up here, we've got a weight inside. And so you can adjust this counterweight or take it out altogether if you want a really light pen. And that will just kind of let it balance nicely for your hand. Then we have two of the grips. We've got the flare grip here, which is kind of similar to the previous one in, in feel a little bit. And then, and then there's the straight grip if you prefer that. And then we've got the buttons. So we can have it work with no button or we can have it work with three buttons and then there's two options here there's a short or a long version so you can have it just kind of set up however you like to work 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity and another thing that we're going to test out in just a moment is the way it feels on the tablet I've been told that it, this has been updated and oh, it does feel quite nice. And then we have the additional nibs, three different types of nibs, including the all new rubber nib, which I'm excited to try out. And of course, all of those live inside the base, which holds the pen. And as far as backwards compatibility, some of your older pens here are going to work on the new tablet. Now the tablet attaches either by a USB cable, which is supplied here with an adapter, so we can go USB-A, or USB-C and you can also connect wirelessly through Bluetooth the cool thing about it though is it has two Bluetooth channels so I could pair it to two different devices and then I can switch between them with the switch and instantly go between different devices using the same tablet all right let's have a look at using the tablet right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this composite I've been working on and I'm gonna add some depth to this dragon here so we're gonna paint with some shadow and some highlight and we're gonna look at the different tools along the way. So one of the things I like to do is set up this button here where I can go in and I can look at the settings. Notice when I tap it, I can see all the different settings that I have. Shows what's on the left-hand side, shows what's on the right-hand side. Now notice that I've set this up to do, you know, undo, redo, copy layer, and then on here, we've got the left set for brush softness, and on the right, rotate. Express key on the left express key, I've set up the radial menu. And in the radial menu, you can set up different things. So here I'm going to choose the brush. Notice when I do that, it's going to go into the brush tool, which is the equivalent of hitting the B key. And then I'm also going to hit default colors, which is going to reset these to black and white. I'm going to create a brand new layer. So there's a layer directly above the dragon. And notice it's clipped to the layer. By the way, if you hit the Alt or the Option key, you can tap and you can clip that in there. 
which is what I want to do. So then it won't go outside the area. Now with the radial menu, I can also drag this and reposition it. So I've set up some other things. So I want to change this to the overlay blending mode. So what I want to do is make sure I have the move tool selected. Now I'm just going to tap overlay blend and notice it changes the blending mode to overlay. So what that does is it enables me to paint with highlight and shadow without losing any of the detail in the image. And I'm just going to control a command J, give me a duplicate of the layer. And I'm going to call this one shad with the shadows. And I'm going to call this one highlights. Now there's another thing I'm going to do, like maybe I'm going to start with the shadow. So let's choose the shadow layer. And one of the things I like to do is choose the brush. So I'm just going to tap there. Notice the brush is selected. And I like to start with the flow set to 10%. So I've also set this to flow 10%. So I can just tap there. See how this can really speed me up. And then I want to go into the brushes panel because there's some settings I need to change in the brushes. Now, uh, let me show you where that is. If you just tap on this little button here, this will also open this up. And this is where the magic of the Wacom pen really comes in. So there's two things I'm going to be working on. Let me demonstrate what these do. So the first thing that this shape dynamic does is it's going to change the size of the stroke based by print pressure. So if I push light, it's thin. And if I push hard, it's going to get thicker. See that? So we can change that size. It's kind of useful for a lot of tools, but I don't use that option as much as I'm going to use transfer. And I'm going to set opacity and flow to pan pressure. Now watch what happens. If I push hard, we get a lot of ink. If I push lightly, it becomes less and I can just kind of shade it in like drawing with a pencil. And for me, that is super powerful. Okay, so let me ditch this layer. So if we tap here, this is going to take us into the control panel. And we can see I've set up some different things. I've created some presets and notice you can change any of these presets and they will come with all the settings. But if you want to change any of the settings, all we need to do is just simply choose the application we want to use, which is Photoshop. If I want to copy a layer, I'm tapping on copy layer and we can see it's a keyboard shortcut. Now I can change it to any of these different things. If I wanted to change the keyboard shortcut, just simply click here and let's just hit clear. I'm just going to do it again. Tap in there and then just hit command J and notice the keyboard shortcut is going to be added. Give it a name and then hit apply. And that's going to be applied to these different express keys. Now, when we want to work with the dials, notice in the dials, I've also created some presets here. So if I want to choose the left dial, making sure we're on Photoshop here, notice the presets colon left and I've created another one for colon right. And so this will change the brush size. It'll change the brush softness and the brush rotate. And I'll go between that by toggling the little button in the middle here. And then on the other side, we can do things like zoom, rotate, and move layers. These are things that I wouldn't be painting while I'm doing it. But on the left-hand side, these are the things that I would be changing while I'm painting. Because my dominant hand is the right hand, I want my left hand to be able to use the dial for those kind of functions I'll be using while painting. Once again, if I want to move layers and stuff like that, I won't be painting at that time. And I can use the dial on the right-hand side. Okay, so let's go into the ProPen 3. And I'm making sure I'm in Photoshop and I'm going to change this button here. I'm just going to tap on erase and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap in there and I'm going to hit X. We're going to call this swap. Apply. So that means now that when I'm painting and I tap this, I'm going to switch between the foreground and background colors, which means that if I'm here and I'm painting with dark, I hit that back button, notice it'll flip, and now I'll be painting with white. So I can go backwards and forwards between painting with shadow and light. So this is going to work quite nicely. So the space bar is going to enable for me to drag this. Okay, let's get going. So I'm going to start painting with some shadow here. And I just want to make that brush a little smaller. So the light's coming from the right hand side. So we want to have the left and shadow, right and the highlights. All right, so that means that some of these areas in here are going to be darkened a little bit. See these edges, we're just going to darken those. And so this dragon was a 3D rendering. And I'm just going to give it more depth here and give it a little bit more of a painterly look by painting in these highlights and shadows. It's really going to help the image quite a bit, you'll see. 
All right, so if we have a look and see what we've done, there we are before and after. You can see we've actually done a lot and it just doesn't always show up until you check the before and after. I'm going a little heavy handed with this so you guys can really see what's going on. Let me hit the highlight. So I hit that back button there and that's setting the foreground color to white. And now we're gonna to start to put our highlights in. Go a little bigger right now and I'm gonna do the larger areas of highlight before I go in and start adding the specular. Okay, I'm going to go smaller now, and I might increase that flow a little bit. There we go. Because now I want to start to get a little bit more specular highlight. All right. And if we have a look at before... And after you can see, we've done quite a lot with our shadows and highlights. This is just the shadow, and this is just the highlight. So if you feel like the shadows are a little strong, which I think they are here, we can just take the opacity, we can roll it back, and just kind of bring it to the amount that we're quite comfortable with. You know, other things I might do is add some shadows around the feet. So this is literally my first time using this new Intuos Pro. So let, let me give you my thoughts on this versus the previous version. One, it has a much, it's much thinner. It has a lower footprint. So I can actually just rest my wrist on the table and draw. I don't have to rest it on the tablet because there's not really a big gap there. So it's quite comfortable. Um, I'm using one of the new rubber tips. Now, when I say rubber, it's still pretty hard. It's not what you would think. It's not like super soft or anything like that, but it just has a nice feel. It has a little bit of grip on the tablet. The way the tablet has changed now is it's a smoother tablet. And Wacom says it's not going to wear out the pen nibs like it did. The actual pen, being able to uh, customize the grip and the weight, it actually feels really comfortable in my hand. I like that. Uh, but the thing that amazes me is the small footprint it takes on my desk. I actually have more drawing area, but it takes up less space. Um, I really like that. And the only other negative that could affect some people is there is no multi-touch, meaning that you can't use it with your fingers anymore. You just use it with the pen. And then Wacom said the reason that they don't have the multi-touch is two reasons. Number one, they polled a lot of users and they found that most people just turned it off. They didn't like the multi-touch because, you know, they would bump things and just accidentally you know get their fingers and things are happening that they didn't want to happen and they just want to control it with the pen and the other reason is by not putting that in there they were able to keep the cost down and keep the price of the new tablet the same as the old one but overall you know i like the new ergonomics this tablet is made out of mag magnesium so it's not cheap same with the stand the stand is also made out of metal as well i like the fact that we can pop this open and then we've got our nib changer. Now, one of the things I did like in the earlier versions, though, I liked how the nibs kind of stuck out instead of being in these packets. But, um, you know, how often am I changing my nibs anyway? So the overall feel while I'm painting and drawing, it feels super responsive. It feels really nice. Um, it's, it's a good experience to work on. And I do prefer the experience over the old Intuos tablets. So I'm actually very excited to be using this in the future. Um, really happy with it i think you would be as well so anyway if you've got any questions or any comments drop them in the comments underneath um, and if you're new to the cafe hit the subscribe button turn on notification you won't miss any of my videos and until next time i'll see you at the cafe